What's up, YouTube? This is Too Raw for TV. All right, so before I get into this video, I want to give a shout out to yet another one of my subscribers for showing love to the channel. Much respect to Elijah for his $30 donation via Cash App to the channel. Elijah is one of uh, the biggest supporters of this channel. Uh, he's a real true blue. A uh, Warriors fan, uh, loves to give basketball. Um, and when I say real Warriors fan, fan, look, a lot of them aren't left on my channel. Casey, him, uh, uh, Steph Curry, the GOAT. But these guys were around during the heyday. A lot of these guys I don't see anymore. You know what I'm saying? I don't really see them as much anymore. And it does make you kind of wonder, like, were they fair boys? Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? I know Town Biz is a, is a Warrior fan. But, yeah, a lot of these guys aren't around anymore, man. But shout out to Elijah for a donation. To anybody who want to show love to this channel, you can do so in the link in the description box below. Um, shout out to the LDBC. Shout out to Ticket. Shout out to... Uh, the one LVZ, LB, shout out to Town, shout out to Polo, uh, Reef, uh, Underrated Darkness, Mahari, uh, everybody. Uh, I'm trying to see if I forgot anybody. Polo, uh, you know, everybody. So, I want to talk about a player who. I think it's been a travesty that he's not in the Hall of Fame. You know, and every year you see a guy that gets inducted and you think to yourself, you know, well, not every year, but a lot of years you say, well, is, he, is, this, is this guy really a Hall of Famer? Is this guy really first ballot? You know, this, that, and the third. And I think what happens with a lot of these, these guys who are voting now is they try to compare numbers and stats. Because a lot of these guys are stat nerds. And you can't compare numbers of players today to guys of yesteryear. Because it's going to be unfair for the guys of yesteryear. These guys didn't dominate the basketball the way guys do today, a lot of them. So their numbers aren't going to look as impressive. There was no three-point shot, so they weren't able to put up the numbers that some of these guys are putting up today. Not a knock on Curry. I'm not knocking Curry when I'm saying this. I just want to make a point. 46% of Curry's points come from three-pointers. So his numbers are going to look better than a lot of guys from the 60s and 70s. But this guy right here, Sweet Lou Hudson should have been in the Hall of Fame a long time ago. Long time ago. He retired 44 years ago, and he's still not in the Hall of Fame. That's a fucking disgrace. Now, unfortunately, we lost Sweet Lou Hudson seven years ago. But hopefully, posthumously, he will be inducted, and his family uh, will see the honor of, of or something that he wasn't able to see in his lifetime. In his 69 years, almost 70 years on Earth, you know, uh, that was probably a dream of his, to be abducted and, and, and talk to fellow Hall of Famers, but it never came to pass. But maybe 2022 will be the year that Sweet Lou Hudson gets in. Um, <clears throat> he was a six-time All-Star. He averaged over 20 points a game for his career and 21 points per game in the playoffs. He scored 17,940 uh, 17, points in his career. And he played, I believe, 13 seasons overall. He 
he combined with Pete Maravich to have one of the most imposing backcourts in the NBA. I mean, two high-scoring, dangerous players were playing with Atlanta Hawks. Now, the Atlanta Hawks had a rather conservative offense and, and, and philosophy, so they weren't this run-and-gun team. So that also kind of kept their numbers down a little bit for the era. Um, but they still had a, an amazing backcourt. And they had a team that, when you look at the players that were on those teams, Bill Bridges and, and, and Maravich and, and uh, Lou Hudson and uh, who else? Um, uh, 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 I'm trying to think of the big man, uh, his name. Um, Walt Bellamy. I'm missing, I think I'm missing somebody. But when you look at that team, you do wonder to yourself, why didn't they have more playoff success? And that was the fact that, you know, the Eastern Conference had a lot of, a lot of strong contenders at that time. We still had the Boston Celtics, who wound up winning titles in 74 and 76. The New York Knicks were dominant in the Eastern Conference of the early uh, portion of that of that decade. Uh, you had the Warriors. You had the Bullets. You had a lot of teams that were uh, strong. The, East, the NBA was very strong in as, fact, in, 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 as far as competition in 1970. You really didn't have one dominant team that dominated the entire decade. So it was competitive. And a team might go 48 and 34, but that team could win the title. Because since every team was so evenly matched, a great record back then was 55 and 27, as opposed to a team winning 70 games now. But they just didn't have enough to win a championship. But he did go to the playoffs, I want to say, almost every year that he was winning the Hawks. Um, as opposed to a guy like Dave Bing, who is in the Hall of Fame, and he should be. But you do wonder if, in addition to his career and Dave Bing going on to have that political career being the mayor of Detroit, whether that had any influence or added influence on him going to the Hall of Fame, who knows? You know what I'm saying? But Lou Hudson, for some reason, has been slept on. Uh, he was a great shooter. He shot 48% from the floor for his career. 80% uh, from the foul line. You only could wonder what his numbers could have been had he played uh, at a time when there was a three-point shot. You could only w wonder what his numbers would have looked like. And um, you know, for a uh, a span, I think from 68 to 75, he averaged better than 25 points, uh, five and a half rebounds, and three and a half assists per game. So, you know, he was one of the, the, the dominant scorers. He's tied with Dominique Wilkins and Bob Pettit for the franchise record for most points scored in the game which is 57. I have a feeling Trey Young being in, playing in this era probably going to break that record one day. Trey Young is probably going to break that record. But it remains to be seen, but I think he probably will. And because he's so ball dominant and he shoots the ball so much and he shoots so many threes, that record is going to fall. Um, but which adds to my point, the three-point shot, if it was shot the way it is today, you could only imagine what type of numbers these guys would have had back there. You know, not a knock on Curry, if I haven't said this already, but, you know, he's great, but 48, 46% uh, of his points come from threes. So the three point shot is very important today. You wonder what type, like I said, I wonder what type of numbers some of these guys would have had if they were playing today. Not saying they were better, I'm just saying that their numbers would be better. 17, 18,000 points might be more like 22, 23,000 points today. 
Um, six jerseys have been retired in Atlanta. Um, with the Kimbe Mutombo, Hudson, Pete Maravich, who I did videos advocating that his jersey be retired and finally was. Uh, Bob Pettit, and uh, who am I forgetting? I said Wilkins, Mutombo, Wilkins, Mutombo. Oh, and Walt Bellamy. Walt Bellamy. And the six is a former mayor. I don't know why Kasim Reed, for some reason, his number was retired. I don't know why. But I don't count that. But of all those players, the only one that's not in the Hall of Fame is Lou Hudson. And that needs to be addressed and needs to be fixed. Okay? Was he the best player in the NBA? No, he wasn't the best player. But he was one of the most feared scorers in the league. Period. And when I look at his numbers and you compare them to some of the later guys that have gotten into the Hall of Fame, it does leave your head scratch. It leaves you scratching your head as to why was he why has he been omitted from the Hall of Fame and others have been inducted? For instance, um, is there any real reason why Chris Mullen is in the Hall of Fame and Lou Hudson isn't? I know the Olympics, and I know Mully, I know Mully had that stretch with the Warriors, but they didn't he didn't really have a lot of playoff success either. So my point is, is it because he played for the St. Louis Hawks, later the Atlanta Hawks, is it because, you know, his personality wasn't the most engaging, he wasn't a media darling? Do these things play factors? You know, that he wasn't, you know, Reggie Jackson. He wasn't, um, you know, Derek Jeter with looks. Do these things play uh, factors into why some guys are in the hall and some aren't. Because I said before, I understand Bill Bradley had a Hall of Fame career, but some people talk about uh, as far as college, but some people act like Bill Bradley put up Hall of Fame numbers as a player in the NBA, and he didn't. So it, it's, it, 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 yeah, you do wonder why some guys are so celebrated and some aren't. But Lou Hudson should be in the Hall of Fame. Period. His level play, his dominance. He uh, he uh, helped to keep that franchise, in my opinion, from going under. And I'll tell you why. Many people at the time did not like the move from St. Louis to Atlanta. after Bob Pettit retired. But Atlanta, the city of Atlanta, supported that franchise. They built a, 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 a fan base there. And a lot of it came from the play, the exciting play of Lou Hudson and ultimately Pete Maravich. And then they got... Uh, they got, uh, I think, Walt Hazard. That's what I forgot to mention. They had Walt Hazard, Bill Bridges, and uh, Walt Bellamy. And they had a very, very entertaining club there in the 1970s. But they were led by their best player. It wasn't Pete Maravich at the time. It was Lou Hudson. He was their most consistent performer offensively. And they had a, a team that would go to the playoffs Maybe they didn't go as deeply as some people expected them. But then you can have the, I'm not saying he has the game of this guy, but you can make some comparisons to Tracy McGrady. Tracy McGrady didn't uh, have long playoff careers, but if anybody says that he wasn't a Hall of Famer, they didn't fucking watch Tracy McGrady play the game the game basketball. If I'm not mistaken, Kobe said that he was the most difficult player for him to guard. Lou Hudson led 
1973 playoffs in scoring, averaging nearly 30 points per game. This guy could fill it up with the best of them in his era. But yet, as I said before, why is he not in the Hall of Fame? There are people who are trying to advocate that guys like Andre Iguodala, guys like um, LaMarcus Aldridge are Hall of Fame. And I'm not calling them liars. Maybe they are. Maybe they will be. But I have a big fucking problem if you're putting guys like that in the Hall of Fame. But yet, Lou Hudson is not in the Hall of Fame. Because you're having you're putting in people who are now questionable. Lou Hudson was excellence. Six consecutive Hall of Fame, excuse me, all star selection. And he played in an era where there were a lot of competition at the shooting guard position in the NBA. I'm just saying, you know, it's, it's it's one of the big travesties, I think, in NBA history. It needs to be rectified fucking soon. So what you guys think?